Hello, welcome back to the Road to Episode 7 one growing series where I chart the road to the release of Star Wars Episode 7 The Force Awakens on December 16, 17, and 18, 2015, depending on where you are in the world. That is my intro. I've been doing it for years, and it's been built over time. Anyway, right, so this is the um, this is going to be my breakdown of the new international Japanese trailer, uh, which again, if you see some of the previous video, I was not expecting at all. They just dropped it in our lap. There you go. There's an alternate edit of the trailer with tons of new footage. I was expecting maybe like three or four new shots, but there's tons of stuff. So I'm going to go through every shot like I did with the uh, the third trailer. But obviously I'll just go through the new shots and not the ones we've seen before. I'd say it's probably about a 50/50, maybe 60/40 in terms of new stuff. I think it's more like 50/50. But um, the first one, as you can see, huge. I don't know exhaust port or something from a star destroyer, and you can see. That's probably Ray there or some character just standing a blip in the you know on the landscape. I mean, I just love all this shit. I just <laughs> I just want a whole film like this with all these massive epic shots of down star destroyers and things. I mean, that section of the film just looks so visually just um, awesome, basically. So that's a great opening shot. And then this one here, uh, which is very Tatooine esque. We got. Uh, moist, moisture evaporators, you know, the, it just it just screams the first Star Wars film, and there's some kind of I think it's Ray Speeder uh, going across the um, the horizon there, and the sun, and as you can see, it's only one sun, so it's definitely not Tatooine. Now, some people seem to think maybe Jakku would be Tatooine, and it was kind of they they're just you know uh, trying to trick us or something, but it definitely isn't because it's just one sun, but um, it's still very reminiscent of Tatooine and stuff, uh, and then we have the shot of. Um, Ray turning back to BB-8, who we hear in this trailer a lot, and I've actually heard that BB-8 is supposed to be a she, a female droid, and they're going to try and market this for girls and stuff, but I haven't really heard anything official about that. I'll get to that in another video. I, I have no problem whether it's a female or male droid, I don't think it really matters, but um, yeah, so there's just an, kind of like an extra shot from the one where she's walking off with BB-8 into the distance that we've already seen. Pretty cool, and we, we obviously I should talk about the fact that we hear new dialogue and that she says that uh, I know what it's like waiting uh, for my family, which really just uh, I don't know if it spoils things, but then it's kind of what I was expecting and hoping at the same time. So, well, no, maybe it isn't. Maybe she's got another family, but I'm pretty sure 98% now that she is Luke's daughter. Um, it still doesn't quite fit to me that she's Han and Leia's kid, although her having such a uh, kind of posh accent, so kind of like a more of a posh British accent in the film, seems to fit more in line with being Leia's daughter for some reason, but I don't know, we'll, we'll see. There's another shot here of her looking at BB-8 um, inside some kind of tent, and that cuts very quickly to Finn. I uh, couldn't get this shot in any kind of focus because it's very quick in the trailer, obviously I downloaded it from YouTube, but it's a very quick shot, not even worth talking about, and then it cuts to this one where they're looking out from the tent. I really like this shot, just the just the production design, you can see that they've built this tent with all these little things inside and that the, the the light coming from behind Finn and stuff, it looks very nice and just just the practicalness of it, you know, it's real and I oh, love it. And then we see BB-8 rolling out of the tent, obviously he's, he or she has seen something and has rolled out and Finn and Ray look out. Really nice shot, the sun is setting and we see BB-8 looking out and then we see this shot. This is like maybe one of my favorite shots from the whole film that we've seen so far of all four trailers the TIE fighters coming in with this big sunset I mean oh it just looks fantastic with the clouds and like oh yeah <laughs> it's just fucking awesome that is that's that's Facebook cover photo material <laughs> um, I almost wish that we didn't see stuff like this until the film but I'm glad that we're seeing more I guess you know um, again the whole trailer didn't really spoil much else you know it, it, they're still keeping it very under wraps, um, which is good. Uh, the next shot that's new is Kylo Ren igniting his kind of cross guard lightsaber. I mean, that's what people are calling it. I don't know if it has an official name. Uh, I read some comments, someone saying, uh, Oh, I'm officially sold on the lightsaber after that shot. Uh, I don't see why it, it seems the same to me, but it's it's kind of cool. I like the scrappy nature of the of the, the blade, basically. It makes it seem like he's rushed it together or something, or it's different than a lightsaber in a way. So I'm wondering how it'll look in action, clashing with the, the traditional lightsaber that we see that is a lot more uh, rounded and smooth and not as uh, you know erratic and staticky and stuff like that. It's more like it's almost like flickering lines of flames more than a, than an actual um, laser kind of thing. Anyway, <laughs> uh, then we have a shot of um, 
Finn and Ray a two shot of them on the Millennium Falcon with Finn saying I'm Finn and Ray saying I'm Ray and so um, the the rumor that she gave him his name Finn based on his um, designated number FN 2187 is clearly not true so it's good to see that some of these rumors are, are really founded on nothing uh, but we get to see that they um, obviously meet on Jakku and then they kind of formally introduce each other on the Falcon which probably means that as soon as they meet, as you can see, there's explosions going off on Jakku and stuff, and so there's a big action scene, and they get on the Falcon, and then so that's probably going to be the big kind of action set piece in the first third of the film. Then we see Leia, another shot of Leia, which is really cool to see, um, in some kind of control room. And then the next shot is, again, very much like, if you see just behind um, uh, Poe Dameron there, who's out of focus in the background, the guy in the kind of red jacket, I think, I'm a bit colorblind, but it looks red to me. Uh, you can see kind of it looks like a circular table, quite reminiscent of uh, the big kind of control table in Star Wars A New Hope. So um, I definitely think that during the big battle we're going to be seeing something very similar with Leia uh, doing the same thing she did in the first Star Wars film, which is kind of cool, I think. Again, people say, oh, I don't, I don't want it to be too much of a rehash, but I like the whole way that the trilogy is kind of rhyme and stuff and the, the classic clip of George Lucas saying, well, you know, hopefully it, like, it rhymes like the next stanza, it rhymes with the next one, hopefully it'll work, you know. I mean, I like it, I think it's a cool idea and, you know, I'm, I'm all for it, I'm not really going to criticize them for doing similar things, I like the idea of history repeating itself as well. And we see C-3PO, I think, for the first time, right? For the first proper shot of him in a, in a trailer, and we see the red arm as well, uh, which is interesting. And again, layer in the background, so that's that shot. Then we see a shot of BB-8 um, looking at an explosion in the desert. Um, this shot looks a bit like it was shot on video for some reason. It's probably just the lighting, I guess. And then we see his or her reaction shot with the flames in the, the eyepiece. I really like that shot. It's kind of nice. Uh, and then this one is really interesting. It, uh, it leads into a shot we've seen in the last trailer. With the, with the X-Wing flying down and blowing up the TIE fighter. And it's, it's like the camera is like on the, the side of it. It looks really great. I, I kind of would like to hope it's a model, but it probably isn't. But it really reminds me of Interstellar. There's a couple of shots in Interstellar of um, the ship, and the camera's kind of placed on the top of it, looking down. And the kind of composition is kind of similar, even if this the camera's on the side in this shot, not on the top. And during that in Interstellar, by the way, it was actually a huge practical model. Um, so yeah, that just evoked Interstellar to me, which I don't think is, a, is too bad. Obviously, it's 2015. This film is going to look more modern than the original film, so uh, I'm not, again, not too precious about them throwing in these fancy angles and things like that, because in the fir very first trailer, uh, the shot of the Falcon, when it flies up and the camera follows it and things, I was a bit, I didn't like the zoom in and stuff, it seemed too modern to me, but um, I think I can kind of let that kind of stuff go now, because it just looks so awesome. Then we have this shot of Rey running across something and grabbing her staff, which has been very controversial. People think that it has a lightsaber inside it. Some people think that Darth Maul's lightsaber is a part of it. Some people think it's Darth Plagueis' lightsaber. I don't know where that's coming from. I've never really delved into the story of Darth Plagueis in the uh, expanded universe. Then we have this shot of Chewbacca uh, kind of roaring, and that was really cool to see, a proper Chewie roar again. And uh, I'm really happy that Peter Mayhew got the chance to step back into the suit. I read recently, actually, that they had a few other actors uh, portray Chewbacca when he's running around and doing action scenes. And then, obviously, when he's more static, they got Peter Mayhew to, to be Chewbacca. I mean, he's in his 70s now. He's had his hips replaced. He can, you know, you, you see him now. He he's, has trouble standing, but he still managed to get in there and, and be Chewbacca probably one last time. I don't know. So that was really cool. And then we see him... Um, detonating a bomb which cuts to a shot that we've seen in the last trailer. Don't know whether it's the same bomb that, that, that causes that explosion, but it's kind of a cool action-y shot. And then finally, the big one that everyone is kind of gushing over is the shot of Rey in the forest with uh, Kylo Ren bringing his lightsaber across uh, across her face and she's looking at it in, in fear. And it's a very intimidating uh, kind of uh, move from Kylo Ren. We can kind of get more of a feel of his character being really kind of... Uh, you know, uh, enjoying his power and his uh, his intimidation, I guess, and fear over other people. Don't know what their relationship is going to be like. If uh, certain things that I believe to be true will turn out to be true, but uh, either way, it's a, a cool little shot, and that's it. So that's the uh, my little breakdown of the the international Japanese trailer. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed it. I like the music as well. I hope it's John Williams stuff, but it probably isn't. Um, and maybe that's good. Maybe it's good to be completely fresh for all the new John Williams music that's going to be uh, in the film, in the cinema. I know that he's um, 
he started scoring or started doing more score stuff uh, like last week so i'll talk about that in another video as well actually so there we go that is it for now um there's probably other stuff that people have spotted and stuff that i've missed but um some great new shots and uh, a great kind of alternate edit of the, uh, the the big trailer so there we go thank you for watching let me know your thoughts of it down below and i'll see you in the next one of which there will be many <laughs>